speaking for an hour and a half, two hours, so um, I just wrote some bullet points, notes uh, for myself, a guideline in order to kind of stay on track here. Um, first of all, let me say thank you to Ms. Tracy uh, for having this event. This is my first time meeting her, and I didn't know what to expect when I got here. Um, she let me know the intention of what she does, and obviously through all of the other speakers that I've seen so far, um, the praise dance, which literally had me almost in tears, and I was trying not to cry because I got all makeup. <laughs> I don't really wear makeup, so I, you know, trying to figure out the semantics of keeping my eyes looking right, um, so that I can present myself in the best of manner for you guys. But I'm Zaza Ali. I hail from Oakland, California. Right. Born and raised, right. absolutely. Um, spent a lot of time in San Francisco growing up. Um, went to Academy of Art University in San Francisco, um, and one of the most trying trials of my life was actually here in San Francisco in uh, 2011. I was indicted for mortgage fraud, and for a year and a half, I came to San Francisco and went to the federal courthouse and fought a case for, you know, what the situation that was happening in my life at that time, which was one of the most difficult, um, things that I had ever experienced in my life and turned out to be one of the greatest blessings mm -hmm. that I ever experienced in my life. So I want you guys to understand that I have a history and I have a background that although may look a certain way to That's certain people, right. it is one of the most, the, one of the things that I am the most proud about because I had literally the United States government coming after me and trying to break me to succumb to their will. And here I stand, grateful, you know what I mean? Overcame that. Uh, like I said, I grew up in Oakland. Um, crack cocaine destroyed half of my family. And I talk about this all the time when I teach. I wrote a book called The Scientific Intervention in Our Affairs because I couldn't figure out how Oakland went from this progressive, uh, you know, um, powerful black political hub. Black Panthers, Nation of Islam, Elihu Harris, right? Mayor Elihu Harris, right? I grew up in those times. And you know we had the port, and you know all this powerful political prowess. And now I'm scared to walk down the street. People are breaking in cars, and I'm scared. Of my, you know, what I mean, my brother-in-law is in the house fighting my sister. Like all kind of madness. And I could not understand how do we go from this to where we are now. So I set out. I call myself a spiritual scientist. I'm always looking for the metaphysics in everything and anything. Right. Right now, my course of study is uh, metaphysics as far as the science of the universe and the science of God. That's my primary focus and what I do right now. But when I was studying crack, I started to follow the train of where this actually came from. Now, the common consensus and what they tell us is that it actually started with some uh, major drug dealers in the San Francisco Bay Area, in this area, that went into a laboratory and figured out how to mix cocaine with baking soda in order to come up with crack rock. That is a lie. We know. We have been, and this is not even what I want to say to you guys, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's on my heart. There has been a scientific war that has been waged, particularly on melanated people around the world, but on all people, right? So. We, we've been talking about addiction, and I know that there are a lot of different stories and reflections of trauma and pain. My addiction was pain, right? So what I teach in my work, in my workbooks and in my workshops is there are stages of consciousness that all of us are reflecting. We are vibrational beings. When I say vibrational beings, I mean there is an energy right now resonating from you, from your brains, all of the thought that you think, they're sending out signals. Your heart, whatever you're feeling, when you just saw that praise dance and it resonated and it made you feel love and feel powerful and feel the essence of God, 
that is an energy and a frequency that is emanating from your heart and will touch everybody in this room. We don't have to touch physically in order to be connected. So when I say we are vibrational beings, I want you guys to understand that you are very, very, very powerful and how you think is what's actually attracting circumstances in your life. So when I say there are levels of consciousness, there's victim consciousness. So you, a prime example, had a boyfriend in your late teens that was abusive, that was mentally abusive, that was emotionally abusive, that was physically abusive. You never took the time to heal. You didn't know how to heal. Your family didn't know how to heal you. So now you go into the next relationship expecting that men are going to be dysfunctional, expecting that men are going to be abusive, and guess what? You're going to attract the same man in a different body. There is spiritual consciousness and levels and layers of spiritual consciousness, and based on what we expect in our lives, we attract and repel different circumstances and situations. I'm in alignment with Tracy's mission. That's why I'm here. You are in alignment with Tracy's mission. That's why you're here. Everybody in here, let me tell y'all something. The, thing, the, 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 the funny thing and the interesting thing about the gift that God has given me, I can feel people's pain. I feel pain in this room. And I'm not saying that to wallow in that because there's a book called The Kabbalion, right? In this book, this book was written by one of the greatest African scribes. His name was Talubi, right? In the book, he talks about the fact that the pendulum always has to swing to the equal or opposite end of the spectrum, right? So let's say you come from an environment of drugs, abuse, turmoil, neglect, abandonment, right? Nobody loved you, didn't grow up with your father, father left you, all kind of turmoil, and all these different reflections and stories that we come from, right? I have a story too. So you're on this end of the pendulum when it comes to your life experience. You've been through some things. There is a universal law, the law of polarity, universal law, that states that everything has to swing to the equal or opposite end of the pendulum. So if you've experienced extreme dysfunction, extreme trauma, extreme pain, extreme abandonment, extreme problems in your life, understand that the universal law says that you have to swing to the equal or opposite end of the pendulum. So you're either going to have extreme love, extreme abundance, extreme gratitude, extreme wealth, extreme success, or more. This is a universal law. When I started to learn this and understand this, it helped me to stand tall on my life experience. I grew up as a motherless child. Mm. Now I mother people all over the world. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So understand when I talk about levels of consciousness, all of us in this room are vibrating a level of consciousness or resonating on a certain frequency right now. You got a radio station? You know that there's 102.9 KBLX? You know that there's, what is K, K, Cameo, 106.1? Yeah. Okay, you got 94.9, right? So if I had a graph up here that showed a radio station, and we had 102.9 here, and we had 92.9, or different radio stations, right? All of those radio stations represent a level of consciousness. So you're, if you're in the pain and pity level of consciousness, guess what? There's a radio station for you. <laughs> and that radio station will, will attract the worst men, okay. the worst women, the worst job, the worst life experiences that, there, that you have to offer. But all you gotta do is switch the station. Yeah. 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 I, I cannot stress this enough because I know when I say it, it sounds too easy, but we are wired for well-being. I can prove it. I'm a scientist. The human body has a alkaline and an acidic mm -hmm. uh, 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 level of measuring your health. So if you are, if you have cancer, or if you have a sexually transmitted disease, or if you have an ongoing problem in your body where you are unhealthy, you will resonate on the acidic scale of the pH scale. If you are healthy, if you eat good, if you live good, if you focus on what you put in your body, you will resonate on the alkaline scale. 
When your body's alkaline, your skin looks good. Mm. You have energy. You feel good, right? You can run up a flight of stairs if you need to. You understand what I'm saying? You physically represent the highest form of what our bodies can express through your pH system, right? That's the physical aspect. Let's look at our emotions. In, on an emotional scale, if you are continuously angry, continuously mad at the world, continuously living in self-pity, continuously jealous or envious or focusing on what other people are doing and not focusing on yourself, right? You develop depression. You develop anxiety. You develop high blood pressure. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So, when you operate from the heart chakra, which is our real power source, which is where all the indigenous cultures taught us to lean on, the heart chakra, right? If you focus on gratitude, if you focus on love, not loving everybody, but exuding love. If you focus on having righteous intent and serving the world as Tracy does, right? If you focus on thinking and living righteously and exuding positive self-esteem and positive self-love into the world, guess what? The universe will respond to you and place people, places, and yeah, things oh on yeah. your path yeah. that resonate on that yeah. same frequency. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fair or unfair. It is what it is. We love it when it works for us. We love it when the rhythm is going, when thing, good things are happening, when the phone is ringing and you're not even putting out a call. We love it when good people show up. We, we take credit for that. We say, okay, I'm doing right. I must be on the right path. God is blessing me. God is putting good people in my life. We have to take accountability and responsibility when it swings to the other end of the pendulum. Self-accountability, self-responsibility, and the ability to look at yourself in the mirror, that's what most people run from their whole entire lives. That's what addiction is all about. That's what addiction to alcohol and addiction to crack and addiction to cocaine, people are running from themselves. Yes. So my question, and I ask this a lot when I, when I talk to you know, um, audiences, how many people in this room have actually truly felt and lived and expressed happiness? Not moments of happiness, but a life of happiness. Waking up in the morning and feeling inspired about your day. Feeling invigorated about the people that you're gonna interact with. Feeling wonder, wonderment about the jobs and the things that you go out into the world and do. That's what I'm about. What's the point of all of this if we're not gonna feel good about our lives? So, where do you start? Because it sounds good, right? And if you're not in a place you know what I'm saying? If you're in that, in that frequency zone where you haven't quite learned how to appreciate and live in gratitude, where do you start? Focus on your breathing. Uh, yes. Glory. <laughs> you are an electromagnetic being. Yes. So when you breathe in full deep breaths, in through your nose, not through your mouth, your nose have nostril hairs that filter the, the air that comes into your nose. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Your breathing can solve 80% of your problems. You clean your bloodstream when you breathe properly. You add energy to your body. You reset the neurological tidbits in your brain, right? Go be in nature. We live in, well y'all live, I live in Atlanta now, right? This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Take time to go out and spend time in nature so that you can realize how small your problems are in the bigger scheme of things. Forgiveness is a superpower. If you have energy that you're holding on to from a past family member or a past relationship, or your children did you wrong, or your family did you wrong, that energy is clogging up your ability to manifest the type of things that you desire. How many people in this room actually know what they want? Do you know what you want in life? Well, I want more money. Okay, here's a dime. Now you got more money. <laughs> what are you consistently asking of God or of the universe? What frequency are you resonating when it comes to what you actually want in your life? 
I ask women all the time, I work privately with counselors, and we start talking about relationships. I said, well, what do you actually want? They name off 10 things that they don't want in relationships. So that's what you're resonating. That's the signal that you're sending out in the universe. And guess what? That dude is on his way. What do you want? What kind of job would you like to have? What kind of career would you like to have? And let's take time and age out of the equation. We, we focus too much on that. We got, you know, you start, I'm 40 now, just I'll be 40 to 41. Amen. Right? And I have just now got to a stage in my life where this shit starts to actually make sense. I'm not going back and reliving my 20s for nobody. I'm feel, I feel extremely grateful to be in the space that I'm in right now where I'm growing into wisdom, but I'm also still connected to and understand how to talk to young people. That's critical for me. When I was a young girl and growing up in Oakland, the women in my environment did not have my back. I experienced a lot of unnecessary turmoil and pain that if one or two real good sisters would have came and pulled my coattail yeah. and said that ain't the way to go, it would have saved me a lot of time and energy. So I always said, you know, when I'm in a position, I'm going to make sure that I right those wrongs through how I interact with young women and young girls, right? So how much time, how much energy do you actually focus on what you actually want in your life? Somebody wants to be in here might want to be a scientist. Somebody wants to travel the globe. Somebody wants to meet a, have a world-renowned, a world -renowned, you know, romantic relationship, meet the love of their life, go live in Bali or something. Somebody in here wants to be a cosmetologist or might be studying for their uh, 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 degree or their license. There might be a scientist, a mathematician, an engineer, right? Do you think that those things are beyond you? No. Who told you that? Your mind and your brain right now, the fact that you're listening to me, there are signals shooting out in this room right now. I could verify it if I had time. So I'm very proud of all of you guys. And I don't have I don't know your story and I don't need to know your story. Like the other sister said, just being a woman in this world and this in this in this in this environment um, is a trying, continuous thing that we have to navigate. But again, if we've been here, where are we headed? The pendulum has to swing back to the other side. Yeah. So when they say, the Bible says, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, right? This is talking about a shift in consciousness. This is talking about a shift in consciousness. Now, the thing about what's happening right now is that everybody's not going to shift. Everybody's not going to grow. So if you work on your breathing, maybe take up a Tai Chi or a meditation or maybe some kind of, uh, not Tai Chi, yoga or some type of martial arts, right? If you read every day something that inspires you and has something to do with what you want to do with your life, if you go spend time in nature, take walks, respect the creator, respect the architect, this is a beautiful building, but it ain't got nothing, to, it ain't got nothing on what we see outside, right? So respect the architect, because it's not just nature out there. We are nature. You are a part of nature. Spend time in nature. Make sure that you're physically taking care of your body. Watch and maintain what you eat. Watch your thoughts. The majority of people spend, the, the psychiatrists say, and I talk about this in one of my workbooks, that um, the average human being uh, thinks 15,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. 75 to 80% of those thoughts are negative. So if I ask you what would be your percentage of negative thoughts, and this is a quiet internal reflection. How many of your thought processes between work, between your children, between the people you deal with in your organization, your school, the environments that you frequent every day, what percentage of your thinking process is negative? And then we can write that down and then we can prophesize what's gonna happen in your life a month from now. What's gonna happen in your months, your life six months from now, right? So change the way that you think, monitor, and that's easier said than done, because we're talking about layers and levels of trauma and dysfunction, but take it one day at a time. The number one priority is to be present in your life. Not focused about tomorrow, not stressing about yesterday, not worried about what happened in the past, or if this is gonna get filled, it always works out. Am I lying? 
It always works out. So how about we stop, learn how to be present, learn how to be centered, start focusing on our breathing, start focusing on the way that we think, the way that we interact with people, and that little kernel of negativity that you may be judgmental against somebody else or envious of somebody else or feeling jealousy and all that stuff, work through that. Look it in the eye and acknowledge that that's part of your journey because that's clogging up the energy that's going to help you get the job that you want. It's all about energy and it's all about consciousness. Um, I have a table over there and I want to thank my good sister Whitney for being here. She's here representing all the super moms of the world. Um, I have a table. You guys can come talk to me. I have work with. Thank you so much for your time and attention and much love to Tracy and all of the staff who put this event on. Um, I'm honored to be here and um, I look forward to talking to y'all soon. Thank you. Thank you.